Hello, hello, happy Wednesday, Confident Ladies. How's it going? Great to see you guys here. I am going to take a peek in the group and make sure this is streaming. It is such a nice day here in New York. I know I usually give you guys a weather update when I first start these lives, um, but it's cool and it's breezy and it's like sweater weather, but I will confess, I do have shorts on. I do have shorts on underneath, but I still consider it sweater weather, right? Anyways, let me see. I'm just going to check here and make sure that if there's anyone looking to join the group. I let them in. So let me actually just also post the link to this blog post again for you guys. So this definitely stirred up some things for people this week. I had a feeling it would. And let's see, edit, discussing this week's blog post. All right. some really cute dogs outside. Turbo is at daycare today. Um, he should be getting another skunk treatment. If you guys didn't hear, this is like, I feel so bad for him. Last Friday, well, let's just say over the last couple years, there's been a skunk living in our neighbor's, but underneath or behind our neighbor's shed. And Turbo has been, that's, every time you've seen a video or anything of him going underneath the neighbor's fence, that's because he's been trying to get this skunk. So, Turbo, poor guy, thought that he was winning, and uh, this was all at 5 a.m. in the morning. I was still sleeping. My husband, Turbo, was barking. Probably was because he smelled the skunk. He sensed it. So, my husband brought him out. He thought he had to go to the bathroom. Well, I guess he basically had the skunk pinned down underneath him, like under his, you know, Turbo's tall. So, it was underneath him and thought that he could... I guess fight the skunk and the, the skunk just sprayed him, sprayed him right in the face. The poor thing. I feel ter I felt terrible. He was like in shock and we rushed inside. We got him um, scrubbed. I've never smelt a stink like that before. Oh my God. It, the crazy thing is if you guys have never had an animal get skunked, a dog or a cat or anything, it doesn't smell like skunk. Like what you smell outside when a skunk sprays, it's like almost like cutting an onion and when you're crying, like when it's so strong and like gas, like that, like we thought we were gonna like pass out or throw up, it was crazy. So poor thing is at daycare again, getting groomed again, uh, getting scrubbed because even though we've already washed him a few times, he's gotten a skunk treatment at daycare, he still smells like it, the poor thing, and it's like in his snout, that's where it smells in his neck, like all this scruff there. Um, Oh, Lindsay said she can't join live because she's at Starbucks and doesn't have headphones. Good to see you. Hi, Lindsay. Great to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, yeah, so anyways, I don't know if Gemma's ever gotten skunked before, but it was crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, I just feel terrible for him, but hopefully he learned his lesson and hopefully he doesn't do it again. Um, so I asked you guys... And props for you keeping it real. Getting started on business is so hard and definitely want to check out the blog post. Yeah, definitely check it out. And actually, I remember back in, I think it was the summertime or springtime, I asked you guys for some topics that you guys wanted me to discuss. And the things that you guys, I think actually, Lindsay, I can remember yours. Yours was, and I don't think I've really written on it yet, but like what to do when people are like friends and colleagues are like leapfrogging you in business. Like you feel like, you know, you all start at the same time and then people start to just like jump ahead. I do remember that. I'm pretty sure that that was your question. And I do need to get to that. Um, but I've literally like had this amazing list of all of these things you guys want me to talk about. And the number one thing is you guys have asked me to be real and to just like share the truth. And you know, I've always shared the truth, but you know, I don't, maybe there's been times in the past where, um, you know, I think sometimes it takes 
a while to process things and to be on the other side of things to really get where you were in that moment. Like if while I was starting my business, let's say the first year of business, if someone would have said like you're too into your business, um, you're working too much, um, you are like too tied to it, I probably wouldn't have believed that, right? I would have thought, no, like this is ease, this is flow, like no, I'm doing it the right way. But like now stepping back over a year later, um, sorry, it's got a text, over a year later, it's completely different, right? I see myself when I first started my business as like being too into the business. Um, so, um, yeah, so I shared with you guys like the reality and last year I did a series that was sort of um, on this a little bit, like what it was like my first year, um, sorry, I keep getting all these text messages, my first year in business. And it was, I think it was like a six week series. Um, and I told you guys, you know, I gave a lot of good tips and everything and like good experience and good, um, I guess good insight into what it was like. But this one, I really sort of dove in and actually, before we get started, I want to just, I had a few housekeeping things. Guys, when I get excited about something, I oftentimes like forget the other things. And I will show you guys, again, truth, true life. I had to write myself a little note about the things that I wanted to announce first as housekeeping before we actually dive in. So, number one, we have made, and actually Lindsay was the one to point this out, and thank you so much, we've made over We've had over 3,000 people now in the Confident Ladies Club. I just still cannot believe like how this group has grown and how still cozy it is and um, the way that you guys have just really formed relationships and kept them. And a lot of you who are posting regularly, like a lot of you have been in the group for over a year, over two years, because this group is over two years old now. Um, I started August of 2015. so. Yeah, I just, I can't believe that we've reached over 3,000 people now, and um, it's just a blessing. I'm so grateful for it, and I'm so proud of you women in this group for, um, you know, really stepping up and sharing your gifts and, um, you know, just being a part of it and engaging, because uh, that's what keeps this group going. So the next one was I just want a couple of reminders. I want to remind you guys about the email engagement that we have going on. So um, yesterday I had a great day. I was able to do my three free sessions with people from the Confident Ladies Club. So if you're on my email list and the more that you open the emails, you read them, you engage, if I ask for you a reply, you check out different things like the videos I post or the blogs I post, the more that you engage in the emails, um, we have something set up in our system that actually gives people scores. And I think this is like the coolest thing. And at the end of the month, what I do is I go in and it will say like who the top people are, who the top engagers are. And actually in Facebook Insights, they now have this too, right? They'll say who the top engagers were in the Facebook group. They'll say like who commented the most, who posted the most. So just to really keep engagement and community up, um, I love to give you guys incentives, and I love to, um, if I have time that I can give, um, this is something that I really love to do. So, for an email engagement, if you're not already on my list, make sure that you subscribe, and you can do that by opting into any of my free opt-ins. Um, I have workbooks, I have uh, master classes, all kinds of stuff. Just go onto my resources uh, tab on my website, and um, yeah, opt in, and then each time I send out an email, just engage. And if for some reason, hi Jennifer, good morning, great to see you. If for some reason you aren't getting my emails, make sure you check your spam and add also my email address into your address book. Um, because actually, I started getting my own emails as spam. The other day I was like, my emails, my newsletters aren't going through, that's weird, like I haven't gotten any in a while. And I noticed that my own emails were marked as spam in my Gmail account. So make sure um, you're not missing out because I do send at least one email out per week, usually on Thursday. 
Um, so with that being said, three people each month will win a 30 minute coaching call with me. And I did my three yesterday. Everyone just happened to pick yesterday. Um, and they were fantastic. And I feel like, you know, we jam pack those. Like I tell people right when we get on the call, Hey, we've got 30 minutes. Let's make the most of this time. Let's dive in. Let's get as much done as we can. And we got a ton done. Yeah, right? I don't, yeah, Jennifer, I think it might be Gmail too because I've had like clients tell me they're not getting my emails. Maya, good morning. Great to see you. How is it going? So um, I'm going to be doing that. And then also in the Confident Ladies Club, the Facebook community here, I'm also going to be checking every month to see who our top engagers are. And now this is just not the people who are coming in and posting, right? Because you can just post and run and that's not engaging. That's not building your know, like, and trust. What's building your know, like, and trust is when you actually engage and you build relationships and people get to know you. You comment on other people's things. You reach out to other people. Um, you give feedback when people ask. So I'm looking for the top engagers who do all of that, who don't just post and run. And the person who is the top engager, which is ranked on Facebook Insights, which I will check, and who commented the most as well, um, they're getting some snail mail from me. So last month, Lou Melchiore, she's actually, um, she's, she was a one-to-one -one client of mine. She's in my inner circle. Um, fabulous, fabulous um, individual. Love her. If you guys don't know, already follow her, you should. Um, she does yoga and Pilates and mind-body wellness-inspired um, workouts for busy entrepreneurs, busy moms, um, busy singles, whoever's busy. She's just great. She has these great workouts that are very simple and uh, easy and accessible. But um, she won, so I sent her a little snail mail. So yeah, Jennifer. Um, so the more that people engage in the group, Facebook will show me those insights and I will pick the top engager to get a little gift in the mail for me. And it's just going to be something small, but just a little, you know, handwritten card and a little gift. It's so nice to get snail mail. I love getting, especially cards in the mail. Oh my gosh, I got two cards in the mail this week from people like in my Facebook group and um, like accountability buddies and then I also got a sweet little letter and um, one of my clients was over yesterday for a session and um, she stayed a little bit longer while I went and did another call to do some of her work um, before going back to her office and she left like the sweetest little love note on my counter just made my day, right? Like something, there's something about handwritten notes that are just, it's so precious. So anyways, that's, yeah, that's what we have going on. Um, I'm so excited guys. I'm probably not going to be super present. I'm going to just tell you guys this in the Facebook group over the next week or so because I have my, um, retreat coming up, my conquer and create retreat with Lacey Sites. We are hosting um, next weekend, the last weekend of September here in New York. We're so excited. Uh, she's going to be joining me and actually Sarah Wiles. Um, she's going to be here with us as well. They're going to be joining me on Wednesday and that's when the planning and well, I should say the, plan the planning's already done, but all of the preparations and everything to welcome the ladies um, will be starting on Wednesday so we're so excited the women are getting in um, Thursday evening Thursday afternoon and we'll be here until Sunday I am just beyond excited you have no idea like this retreat has been such a blessing in my life Lacey and I were talking about it last night um, we're just the way that it's all worked out for us and for the women who are coming um, it's just been a very like sort of magical experience. Um, so we're so excited. So I'm probably not gonna be as present in the Facebook group or even on Instagram over the next week or so um, just because I'm gonna be prepping and getting myself all ready. Um, we're actually doing a, an event the first night. We're do, doing like a welcome event at my home here. We're gonna have a bonfire. I'm so excited. Very, very exciting. Um, so, yes, yeah, so let's see, events take a lot. I used to be a professional event planner, Jennifer says, and the run-up to the event was always intense energy and excitement. Exactly. It's like, yes, you are so right, Jennifer. It's like there's a lot of that energy where it's like, you know, going, 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 but it's like excitement and like I just can't wait for it to be here. I think of like being a kid and like planning my birthday parties and how I used to feel that way. Um... So yeah, those are our announcements. I had a lot of announcements this morning. 
Um, but let's just dive in then. Let's dive into this topic. I want to hear if any of you are here and you have feedback, you have thoughts on it. Um, so this week we talked about my, actually the name of this blog post was you might not like me after reading this post, which is fine, right? Because not everyone in business or life has to like us. And when we write blog posts, these are our opinions, right? There's no right or wrong way to anything in life. Um, so this is all coming from my perspective and my perspective may be different than your perspective and that's okay. And my favorite thing to do in life is to agree to disagree, right? It's fine that we disagree and we're still friends. We still respect each other. So it's fine if you guys don't agree with this. It's fine if, um, you know, it just wasn't your thing because again, we all have our own perspectives and you know, even close friends of mine, family of mine, uh, business, people who are in business who I uh, look up to, sometimes they write things that I don't fully agree with and that's okay because I still respect them and I respect that these are their opinions um, and their perspectives. Actually, I like you more for your candor and willingness to be polarizing, yet doing so with love and text. So well done. Oh, Jennifer, thank you so much. Always have the kindest words to say. Um. So yeah, I spoke a lot. So this whole week was about sacrificing an investment. And I got really, really raw with you guys and told you like what it really was like starting this business because I don't want to like sugarcoat it. I don't want it to make it look easy because let's just say someone who just stumbled upon my Facebook group, started following my stuff, they may look at my life and look at my business and be like, why did like why is it so look so easy? Um, you know, she's only working like 10, 10 hours. Like I, when I wrote this blog post, which was about six weeks ago, I was saying that I was working about 20 hours a week, but I'm going to be real with you guys right now. I'm lucky if I can work 10 hours a week in my business. Um, I'm basically like seeing my one-to-one -one clients doing my group calls and then whatever's left over. Like when I have childcare, that's what I do is my one-to-ones, my group calls, and then whatever's left over is just like sporadic time. Like my content planning, my um, programs planning, like uh, content writing, all of that stuff is literally like whenever, like if the baby's napping for 15 minutes or someone's holding her or, um, you know, sometimes like this morning I got up really early um, when the baby was still sleeping and did some writing. So that 10 hours that I have now is like basically what I do my calls with and that's it. And then I try to run my business any other little scraps of time I can get. So again, for someone, hi Becca, great to see you. And loving the real talk, she said. Thank you, thank you. I just wanna show that, you know, it's not easy running a business. And hi Catherine, great to see you. We're actually just getting started right now because um, I did a little bit of housekeeping and gave some announcements. It was so great to connect with you yesterday, by the way. Uh, Catherine is doing some amazing things. Um, but yeah, so anyone sort of just like walking in now, and this is what we tend to do, right? We see like someone who I really, really admire. Her name is Christine Kane. She's um, a Christian speaker. She's an author. Um, she has something called the A21 campaign where she um, has this huge campaign to rescue people who are victims of human trafficking. Um, she's I think she's like in her late 40s or so, um, but I look at her and I'm like, man, like she sort of came out of nowhere, right? Like, man, she's like found this success so quickly and I just admire that. And it's okay, right? Because that's just me coming into her life at this moment. This is what I see. Hi, Lou. Great to see you. Oh, and Susan's here. Oh my goodness, Susan. Hello, Susan. I loved your letter, this, your card this week. Susan, I was just talking about how I received snail mail and how it made my day. One of those cards was from Susan. And a beautiful book and a beautiful gift for the baby. And Lou, it's so great to see you here. I was actually just talking about you earlier too. Um, so anyways, yeah, so I walk into her life at this moment and I'm like, wow, like it seems like she just started a couple years ago and she's huge, like her campaign is huge and like she's written all these books so quickly. and it makes me think like there's no way that 
overnight success is really a thing, right? So I do more research and then I hear her story and how, you know, she started ministry back when she was like in her 20s. And this has been like 20, 30 years leading up to her being at this point where she is in her business, right? And I think we tend, again, to forget that. And anyone right now walking in may say, oh wow, she's working 10 hours a week and, um, you know, she has this business that she's able to still run. Like, how is that possible? Like, can I start my business and just work 10 hours a week and, you know, get to a certain place where I want to be? Well, I'm going to tell you guys, you know, again, this is why I'm being real and honest with you is I want to show you, I'm not going to sugarcoat things. Like even that 10 hours a week right now is really, really hard. Like in some ways it's harder now than it even was, um, back when I started my business. Um, but when I started again, like there were so many sacrifices I need had to make so many investments I needed to make. And someone brought up a really good point after they read this yesterday. I think it was Molly in the group. She um, spoke about how it's not just sacrifice, it's not just investing, but it's actually going out there and doing the things, right? It's going out there and um, actually going and implementing and making this happen. Um, my mind is drawing a blank right now. I forgot the word that she used. It's in the group somewhere. Um, it's one of those basic words, right? And my mind just, just slipped my mind. Um, but yeah, it's about actually just going out there and doing, right? It's not just making the sacrifice, not just investing, but following through and implementing and executing and doing all those things that need to be done in your business. So, you know, I shared about how my, you know, first six months of my, before I launched my business, like, I wasn't making any money. I was, um, you know, taking on free people, free clients. Um, yeah, I know, and it wasn't even implementing, Susan. Thank you. That's the word. I can't remember what the word was. It's was very simple word. I'm going to have to look. It's driving me crazy now. Um, but, yeah, now I'm like, oh, let me look in the group. Discipline, that's the word, I checked, all right. She said discipline, that's the thing. It takes not only investment, it takes not only sacrifice, but it takes discipline. And I think that's the piece that, and that's the piece that I left out of here. And um, that was really, really great feedback, Molly. I thank you for, for giving me that because um, I think that's the most important part, right? Is actually being disciplined, because you can make the sacrifices but you could be dilly dallying. You could make the investments, but you could, you know, not be putting your all into it. But the way to tie it all together is really just the discipline. It's making it happen. It's staying focused and, like Susan said, going out there and implementing and doing the work. Um, so yeah, I gave you guys a snapshot. And if you want to, you know, read more about this, make sure you go to the blog post. I posted it in um, the top part of this Facebook Live. In the, and also in the comment area. But I talk about like all of those sacrifices I made, all of the investments I made, and um, you know, like right here, I'm just reading, I made zero money in my business the six months uh, pre-launch, and then even a couple months into my business, I was just seeing free clients. And the first three months, I said I gave over 100 free coaching calls away. And you know, I am so grateful that I did that. Um, because that grew my confidence and here's the thing is sometimes people get so stuck on like who's my ideal client? What's my messaging? Um, you know, who am I going to serve and You know, it's easy to sort of do the it's like to sit back and to do the writing and to try to figure it out And I think that is very important But I think the most important thing is actually getting out there like Susan said and implementing right going out there and practicing and trying and who I sort of had as in mind as my ideal client when I first started is very different than who my ideal client is today. And again, that also evolves over time. Like when you are evolving as a person and growing as a person, like your business is going to continue to organically change. Um, but what really helped me get clarity and feel really confident in who that person was, was me just doing free calls, was me just practicing coaching, seeing like what I liked about coaching, what I didn't like about coaching. And just remember in all of this, like nothing is ever set in stone. Nothing is ever black and white. 
things can be ever changing. Um, like I had a conversation with some yet someone yesterday and they were saying how, you know, I want to launch this, but I'm sort of like, I don't know where to start. Like, I don't know, um, you know, if this price is too much or if I'm going to be, or is it too, too, um, inexpensive and I'm going to be giving too much away. And I said, just put something out there. You're not going to know until you start doing it. And yeah, if you go out there and you feel like the price isn't right, if it's too expensive, maybe you feel, then you know what, you can start adding more value. If you feel like it's not um, quite expensive enough or it's not you know, really compensating you for what you wanna be compensated, then you can increase the price for the new people who are joining. You know, it doesn't have to, nothing is set in stone. Everything can constantly change. Um, you guys have probably noticed that you know, I used to have like the standard packages in my um, on my website, and recently I realized, you know what? Like, there's been times in my business where I've gone back and forth, and um, you know, change packages and wonder should I add this or take this out, give more support, um, and charge a little more, and give a little bit less support and independence to people, and charge a little less. Like, what do I do? Well, the thing that's worked the best for me over the last few months now, um, actually the last six months has been to have no packages at all and have a conversation with people after they do an intensive and just see where they're at and say, all right, you know what, I think this is what you need. I think you need this support. Or, you know what, you don't really need a ton of support, you need more accountability, so why don't we do the inner circle? Um, let's do my business incubator because you can get an accountability buddy in there, you know, you don't need, maybe you don't need that one-to-one -one support right now. Let's see, you know, what feels good for you. So. I really just take it on a case um, by case basis um, and it takes that pressure off of me. So I'm just wondering, any of you who have read this post, um, do you guys have feedback? Do you have things that triggered you? Um, you know, bring it all up. It's fine. This is just an open conversation and again, we're not all going to agree and that's okay. And again, this is just my perspective. So. There's, this is not like the right way, right? These are not like answers I'm giving you. These are just my thoughts, um, what I feel has worked for me. Um, but the one thing that I will tell you that is set in stone is the discipline part, right? And is sacrificing and is investing. If you do want to have a successful business, you do have to make some sacrifices. And they may not be as extreme as the ones that I talked about. It could be something like, um, you know, maybe you don't have a nine to five schedule, right? Maybe your hours are a little bit different. It could be a sacrifice as simple as that. Um, it could be a sacrifice as simple as, um, you know, you're used to having your lunch every day at 12 o'clock and now you have to move it to one o'clock. Um, and investing, you know, it doesn't have to be maybe to the level of where I invested, but again, you have to figure out what works for you. Um, maybe it's a different way that you invest in your business. But again, the one thing that has to stay the same is the discipline. Discipline is discipline. And in order to make strides in your business, you know, you've got to go and you've got to do and you've got to implement. You can't just sit back and you can't just wait for it to happen. Because making the sacrifices without discipline, there's no sense of doing it, right? Making the investment without discipline, there's no sense of doing it. It's all just sort of a waste. You've got to have the discipline. So, um, yeah, thoughts, comments, I'd love to hear, guys. Um, let me check in the Facebook group. And again, if you guys haven't read the post yet, make sure that you head over to my blog, take a peek. Um, let's see. And if anything comes up after this Facebook Live, feel free to just um, comment below and I'll answer you guys. I'd love to give you more feedback. Let's see. And oops, it looks like. Becca says, I greatly appreciate it because it feels like there's so much noise around how easy it is to scale your business doing A, B, and C. In actuality, it takes work. Exactly, Becca. And that's what really tripped me up in the beginning was I kept feeling like, what's wrong with me, right? Like, all these other people, oh, we've got some people who wanted to join the group. I'm just gonna let them in real quick. Um, I think the misinformation leads to feeling one is failing at business. Yeah, and I totally felt this way. I would go into these Facebook groups or I'd see people on Instagram and I'm like, 
oh my gosh, they tripled their income in 48 hours of launching their business? Like, what's wrong with me? Why haven't I made any income? And then, like, as I'm out of it now, I'm like, tripled their income, that could mean that they made a dollar in their first business, and now in this business, within 48 hours, they made three dollars, right? Like, everything is so vague, and it just, it can really make us feel bad about ourselves and have us comparing to one another. Um, I think it's important that you really, you know, when, okay, so when you do start to compare yourself, maybe you write down, like, what is it that that person said, right? They tripled their income, okay? That's, that's the statement that they make. Then I want you to look at the other side, like, literally write this down. What are the facts? Like, and ask yourself, what are those facts? Do you know what their income actually was? No, you don't know. What does tripling actually mean? Does it mean that they made $1,000 in their last business and now within 48 hours they made 3,000, which is possible. But it could just mean, again, they made a nickel in their first business and now this business they made 15 cents. You know? You just don't know. Lou says, thanks so much, great blog post this week. Have to go see you later this afternoon. Yes, I'll see you in our coaching call in Inner Circle later on. Yes, Becca, CBT our way out of it. If you guys don't know what that means, cognitive behavior therapy. Um, Becca is a therapist. And yes, exactly. You know, Becca, a lot of um, the foundation of my coaching work is all from CBT. It's all from cognitive behavior therapy based dialectical behavior therapy based um, a lot of that stuff a lot of that reasoning is like again like sitting down writing the hard evidence out um, it really helps people like be able to rationalize things and see wow okay this maybe isn't exactly what it seems um, so I see that is so so valuable Becca you having those skills to help people um, any other comments from anyone? Again, if anything comes up, or if you're watching the replay, yes, thought restructuring is so important, exactly. If you're watching the replay, please um, definitely comment, ask questions, and I'll still get back to you. Um, but yeah, I guess we'll end here today. Thank you guys so much for coming, for sharing this morning with me, and I'm so excited to see you next week. And um, again, ask away. I'm here. I'm an open book and I will chat with you guys soon. Enjoy your Wednesday. Bye.